Hi folks, so welcome back to another lesson and this time we're going to look at standing or stationary waves and you can really use either term to describe these. And we're going to describe what stationary waves are, use the term nodes, anti-nodes, solve problems with stationary waves, um, identify situations where stationary waves may happen and determine the wavelength of a microwave using stationary waves. So these two we might not cover in a lot of detail because we do need some demonstrations for those. Now, again, just to remind you, what are the basic characters of the wave? Can you write down the mathematical functions for those waves? So pause the video and try and write down as much as you know. Treat this as a bit of a revision exercise. Now, a stationary wave is uh, a result of a traveling wave being reflected into and interfering with itself. And if I was able to show you this, um, we, you would see that a stationary wave would look like this. Now, why do I have all these extra waves here? I would highly recommend you watch the video, but essentially what's happened is that there is a single wave here. So for example, it could be a string and it's made to vibrate up and down, but because the ends are fixed, then as a wave goes from, the string goes from here to here, it gets reflected at the end. And so you get a wave sent back the way and remember, and we're going to cover this a bit later on. If you've got two waves that are meeting in or out of phase, you can then get constructive or destructive interference. So please watch the video on the stationary wave and this diagram will become a lot more clearer. Now to talk about these waves in a little bit more detail, um, we've got our same diagram for stationary wave here, but notice that where there is no amplitude, we have called these bits nodes. So the proper definition, which I want to learn, is that nodes are positions with zero disturbance, and the anti-nodes are where you've got position with maximum disturbance. So these bits are called anti-nodes, and these bits are called nodes. Now, it's really important to, to bear this in mind that um, in order to have one wavelength or one wave, you must have two nodes. So what I mean by that is in order to draw this wave here, we must have two nodes. So to draw two waves, we actually need uh, three nodes. To draw three waves, we actually need four nodes. So notice that pattern there. Now with the anti-nodes, it's a wee bit trickier because to draw one of these waves, we've got one node there, anti-node, sorry. Then we've got our second anti-node, and then we've got our th third anti-node. Now, when we come to do the calculations in part two, we'll talk more about this idea uh, to kind of show you how it works in practice. Now, the key thing you need to know is that from node to node, there's half a wavelength, and from anti-node to anti-node, there's also half a wavelength. So it's not really that correct to talk about this being a wavelength or a wave, it's really half a wave, because that is what the distance is actually measuring. So um, again, if we were in class, we would have a look at this experiment, but I'm just going to talk about it. I'm going to do some worked examples on it. So the idea of this is that we have a transmitter, which usually sends out either sound waves or microwaves. We have a piece of aluminium here, and the idea of the aluminium is that it acts like a mirror and it reflects the waves when they get to here so that we can set up our standing wave. We then have a probe which we can move from the transmitter to the reflector, and we should detect um, uh, readings that are maximums and minimums as we go along here. Because remember, if we are looking at a standing wave, we should have nodes where there's very little amplitude to anti-nodes where there are maximum amplitudes, nodes, anti-nodes, nodes, anti-nodes, anti so on and so forth. So remember, the key point is that the distance between a node or an anti-node is half a wavelength, and counting how many maximas or minimas allows us to work out the distance between consecutive nodes. In other words, we can work out the actual wavelength of the node. Now, just to help you kind of get an idea of what this is all about, there's a really nice summary here by Bozeman Physics, which takes you through the idea of a standing wave, and he has a lot more kind of cooler uh, animations that I've got available. 
And then this one's really just a really cool thing you can do is you can set up standing waves using gas. And if you set that gas on fire and make it vibrate at different frequencies, you can actually get sort of like a dancing flame. So again, I would highly recommend you watch both of these videos.